identify the lower class limits, upper class limits, class width, class midpoints, and class boundaries for the given frequency distribution, and also identify the number of individuals included in the summary. So over here, we're going to take a look at um, the data that we're given. So you notice here on the left-hand side for this column, it says age, which is the years when award was won, and then to the right is the frequency. And so here we have our classes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. Okay, so now what we want to do is, in the first question, they're asking us to find and identify the lower class limits. So let's take a look at the lower class limits. Okay, so we want to die, def, uh, find the uh, lower class limits. And now keep in mind, what are the lower class limits? Well, lower class limits are the smallest number that can belong to each of the different classes. So if we review the frequency distribution, we can determine the lower class limits. So the lower class limits are going to be 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, and 85. And so therefore, that's going to represent the lower class limits. So there are the lower class limits. Okay, now we want to be able to identify the upper class limits. Well, the upper class limits are going to be the upper class of each class. So here is 34, 44, 54, 64, 74, 84, 94. So again, as we stated, okay, they are the largest number that can belong to each of the different classes. And so therefore, by reviewing the table, we end up finding that they were 34, 44, all the way to 94. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to be able to identify the class width. Okay, well, in order to find the class width, the class width is the difference between two consecutive lower class limits or two consecutive lower class boundaries in a frequency distribution. So we haven't yet found the class boundaries, so what we need to do is find the difference between two consecutive lower class limits. So the two lower class limits, the first one, we have 25 and 35. So if we take 35 and subtract 25, that's going to give us 10. Therefore, the class width is going to be 10. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to identify the class midpoints. Okay, so we have the table here again, so we're just repeating the, the, the table here. So the class midpoints are the values in the middle of the classes. So each class midpoint can be found by adding the lower class limit to the upper class limit and then dividing the sum by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we take the first class, which is 25, and then add 34, and then we're going to divide that by 2. Okay, so if we take 25 and add 34, we get 59 divided by 2. And then 59 divided by 2 is going to give us the first midpoint, which is 29.5. Okay, for the second one, so let's find the midpoint for the second class, which is 35 plus 44. So if we take 35, add 44, and then divide that by 2, we get 79 divided by 2. 79 divided by 2 is going to give us 39.5. Let's try one more here. So for 3, we're going to take 45, add 54, and then divide that by 2. 45 plus 54 is going to give us 99. If we divide that by 2, we end up getting 49.5. Okay, so you can see what the hap what's happening with the pattern here. Since the class width is 10, if we add 10 to 29.5, we get 39.5. If we add 10 to 39.5, we, we get 49.5. So we don't need to calculate the rest of those. We can basically just add 10 to each one of them. So we get 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, 59.5, 69.5, 79.5, 80.5, 5, and 89.5. And therefore, that represents the class midpoints. Okay, now it says we want to identify the class boundaries. Okay, so how do we find the class boundaries? Well, the class boundaries are the numbers used to separate the classes, but without the gaps created by class limits. 
Class boundaries split the difference between the end of one class and the beginning of the next class. Add the upper limit of the first class to the lower limit of the next class and then divide the sum by 2. And recall that the upper limit of the first class and the lower limit of the second class are in this case 34 and 35 and therefore we're going to add these values and then divide the sum by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. If we take 34, add 35, and then we're going to divide that by 2. So if we take 34, add 35, we get 69, and then we're going to divide that number by 2. And so that gives us 34.5. Okay, now if we do the second one here, so again, we're taking these two, and now we're going to take 44 and 45. So let's take 44, add 45, and then divide that by 2. And we end up getting 89. And then divide that by 2, we end up getting 44.5. So if you notice, we end up getting the same thing here. So this is the first class boundary that we have. And then if we add 10 using the class width, we can get the same result. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 34.5, 44.5, 54.5, all the way to 94.5. Okay, now if you notice here, there's another value, 24.5. So the class boundaries, we have to have a number that is before the data, and then there's one after the data. So if you notice here, on this last one, we have 94. 0.5, so it goes beyond the data. So we need to find the other number that's before 34.5. So in order to do that, to find the the uh, the first class boundary, is you would take 34.5, subtract the class width, and that gives you 24.5. And therefore, if you take a look at the data, okay, you can see here that 24.5 is less than 25 and 94 is greater and 94.5 is greater than 94 so therefore these would then be the class boundaries including all those values okay so now it says we want to be able to identify the number of individuals included in the summary so in order to do that we would the frequency for a particular class is the number of original values that fall into that class so the total individuals is the total column here in the frequency so if we take 27 plus 33 plus 15 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2, that equals 5, and therefore that gives us the number of individuals that's included in the summary.